Hello everyone and welcome to lecture 80 of this series. This series of lectures is based on my book Manual of Fluid, Electrolyte and Acid-Based Disorders, A Pathophysiologic Approach to Common Clinical Problems. I'm Dr. Mohamed Tinawi. I'm a nephrologist in Northwest Indiana. You can find the book on Amazon at the link below. We are still on Chapter 11, Intravenous Fluids, Chemistry, and Indications. This is Part 5, Case Studies, and actually this is the last segment of my book. So today we are going to finish discussing my book. In the future, there will be updates on this playlist, Fluids and Electrolytes, and in the near future, there will be discussion of other nephrology topics. So thank you very much for sticking around. Case number one, hyponatremia due to hydrochlorothiazide. What you have to do in these cases is to choose the intravenous solution or solutions, because there can be more than one correct answer that is or are appropriate for the given scenario. So here we have an 82-year-old woman with hyponatremia, sodium 125 mL equivalents per liter due to hydrochlorothiazide. So are you going to give 0.9 normal saline, 0.45 normal saline, D5W, LR, 3% saline, or 5% albumin? The correct answer is 0.9 normal saline. So to correct hyponatremia in a patient with hydrochlorothiazide-induced hyponatremia, you give 0.9 normal saline. You're not going to give half normal saline or D5W because those are hypotonic solutions. LR, lactated ringer, is a little bit hypotonic, so it's inappropriate. Now, if the hyponatremia is severe or if it does not correct with 0.9 normal saline, if the patient has symptoms, you are going to use 3% saline first, and then you are going to use 0.9 saline afterwards. Case number two, hypokalemia and metabolic alkalosis. We have a 45-year-old man with hypokalemia, potassium 2.9, and metabolic alkalosis with a serum CO2 of 39 due to vomiting. Are you going to use 0.9 saline, half normal saline, D5W, LR, 3% saline, or 5% albumin? The correct answer is 0.9 normal saline. You correct the hypokalemia and you give saline. For someone with metabolic alkalosis, you must do two things like we discussed in detail on that chapter. You correct the hypokalemia and you give 0.9 normal saline. You have to provide chloride. Lactated ringer is a bad choice because it has lactate, which gets converted into bicarbonate, and the bicarbonate is already elevated. Case number three, hypotension, sepsis, and acute kidney injury. We have an 85-year-old man with hypotension due to a septic shock. He has acute kidney injury and normal sodium and normal potassium. How are you going to resuscitate? 0.9 saline, half normal saline, D5W, LR, plasma light A, which is a balanced electrolyte solution, or 5% albumin. Well, we said that the patient is hypotensive, so you have to resuscitate. Most of the times, uh, you are going to use 0.9 normal saline or lactated ringer. Plasma light A is not a bad solution, is not a bad option. It's uh, more expensive and less available, but most definitely you can use that. 5% albumin is not a bad option either, and there's no difference. Uh, so most of the times, the cheapest and the most wildly available options are 0.9 saline and lactated ringer. So uh, any of those options uh, is valid. Case number four, uh, we have here hypotension and third degree burn. 26-year-old woman with hypotension and third degree burns. Are you going to give 0.9 saline, 0.45 saline, D5W, LR, plasma light A, or 5% albumin? In burn patients, 5% albumin is particularly helpful. In addition to that, in addition to the albumin, you are going to need other solutions depending on the electrolyzed value, blood pressure, etc. So you give the 5% albumin and then you give 0.9 saline, LR, half normal saline, D5W, plasma light, depending on the situation. So you are going to need all of the above. 
Case number five, hypernatremia and traumatic brain injury. 55-year-old woman with hypernatremia, sodium 155. Blood pressure is a little bit low, 92 over 55, and the patient has traumatic brain injury. Are you going to give 0.9 saline for her blood pressure, 0.45, B5W, LR, 3% saline, or 5% albumin? The appropriate option is 0.45 normal saline. Why is that? Well, the sodium is high, so you want to give a little bit hypotonic solution. D5W is not a bad option, but with a low blood pressure, you want to give 0.45 saline. So you correct the hypernatremia and also you support blood pressure. Now, we have to say that albumin should be avoided in patients with traumatic brain injury. We discussed the study in the New England Journal of Medicine showing increased mortality. So albumin is definitely a wrong answer. Case number six, 18-year-old man. We have an 18-year-old man with type 1 diabetes mellitus and hypoglycemia. How are you going to correct the hypoglycemia? D5.9 saline, D5 half normal saline, D5W, D5LR, D10, or D50. Well, you can use any of those. Uh, anything that has dextrose is good. Um, most of the times you're going to use D5W, and if the hypoglycemia is severe, you're going to use D10 or even D50. You can use 0.9 if the patient is hyponatremic. You don't want to make it worse. Um, if the patient is hypotensive, you might use D5.9 or D5LR, but the bottom line is you want to use uh, dextrose. Case number seven, hypotension postparacentesis. We have a 72-year-old man with alcoholic liver cirrhosis who is hypotensive, so blood pressure 89 over 45 postparacentesis. Eight liters of ascites were removed. How are you going to correct the hypotension? 0.9 normal saline, 0.45 normal saline, D5W, LR, 25% albumin, or 5% albumin. Well, uh, it is appropriate to give 5 to 10 grams of albumin postparacentesis for each liter removed. So we removed 8 liters, 8 times 5 is 40, to 40 to 80 grams of albumin is appropriate. Most people probably will give uh, 2 uh, little bottles of 25% albumin. Each one gives you uh, 25 grams, so if you give 2, uh, you give 50. Additionally, after you give the albumin, if you need to give more fluids, you can add 0.9 saline or LR. Um, you can also use 5% uh, albumin. Um, if you give a liter, uh, that will give you uh, 50 grams. So uh, you start with albumin and you can add 0.9 saline or LR as needed. Case number eight, uh, plasma light versus 0.9 saline or LR. The new director of the intensive care unit at your hospital is requesting that all critically ill patients receive resuscitation with plasma light 148 rather than isotonic saline or LR intravenous solutions. Does current literature validate this request? Now, this request uh, did not sit well with the hospital administration because plasma light 148 is expensive while isotonic saline or LR is very inexpensive. So uh, you had uh, to determine if this step is necessary, if the cost is justifiable. Well, um, as uh, any good uh, physician, you do a literature search and you quickly come upon this article in the New England Journal of Medicine from uh, 2022. Uh, it was the results uh, of the PLUS study. This study was published uh, in 2022 and was conducted in Australia and New Zealand. It was a long-awaited study. It randomized 5,038 heterogeneous, critically ill adult patients to receive either plasma light, 148, or saline. After 90 days, the risk of acute kidney injury or death was not different between the two groups, and therefore the request cannot be justified based on current literature. Um, I thank you very much for sticking with me until the end. Like I said, I will continue 
to update uh, this uh, playlist as appropriate. And in the very near future, we are going to start discussion of other interesting uh, topics. Uh, please subscribe to the uh, channel. Please support the effort by uh, purchasing uh, the book. Uh, please like uh, the videos, etc. And uh, see you soon.